afternoon. Oh, it's working? Yeah, excellent. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you all for showing up. Um, I'm going to give you a presentation about DNSSEC and about um, Kaminsky's cache poisoning attack. Uh, let me just introduce myself and my organization. I work for SurfNet, which is the national research and education network in the Netherlands. We connect all uh, universities, polytechnics, etc. Uh, which is over 180 institutions in the Netherlands, and we have some 1 million end users connected to our network. And for this project on DNSSEC, which we've been running within our organization, I've been cooperating with Rick van Rijn here on the first uh, row, who uh, is self-employed and works for Open Fortress. Now, what I'm, uh, what I'm going to tell you today is something about cash poisoning. So what are the security risks that are in the DNS? Uh, today, um, I hope you've all seen Bert Hubert's talk yesterday, which was an excellent overview of all the attacks that there are on DNS. Um, then I'm going to talk to you about DNSSEC uh, on a high level, dive into some detail, tell you about what the status of DNSSEC is uh, on the internet today, and then have a look at some uh, criticisms, some alternatives, and then I'm going to tell you what you can do to improve the security of the internet. Now, let's start with DNS. What do we actually need DNS for? What do we use it for? Well, actually, DNS uh, are the road signs for the internet. Uh, we need the DNS to tell us where we need to go if we want to uh, communicate with our bank, for instance. And it's been known for years that there are uh, vulnerabilities in DNS. Uh, one of these attacks is called cache poisoning. DNS works by using UDP packets, and I can really easily spoof a UDP packet. And for instance, I can trick a DNS resolver into believing that I'm actually sending him a valid answer to a query that he sent. So I can be a rogue responder, and I can just send lots of spoofed uh, UDP packets to uh, a DNS resolver. And if I'm quick enough, if I give him uh, what seems to be the correct answer before the real answer arrives, then that spoofed answer will end up in its cache and it will end up being served out to all its uh, end users, which, if you are a large ISP, can be quite a number of users, as Bert Hubert told us yesterday. Um, now, these attacks that have been known for years were, um, they were possible, but they're really hard to do. You needed uh, to, for instance, either wait for a resolver to uh, start querying for an, ad uh, an address or uh, you had to wait for the time to live on an answer that it had in its cache to expire. So it was really nasty. Uh, you could be tricked into going to something that was really not your bank. Uh, so the value of the road signs on the internet was degrading. And then last year, uh, Dan Kaminsky, who had a talk uh, here yesterday, published an attack at the Black Hat conference. And he made matter, matters a whole lot worse. Because instead of actually having to wait for a resolver to take initiative or having to wait for the TTL in the cache to expire, you could just go at it, uh, keep firing uh, uh, rogue packets at the resolver and actually hack it at your leisure. Because what you would do is you would ask the resolver, uh, query it for a name that you're quite sure that it doesn't have in its cache and then uh, take all the time in the world to spoof some answers, and if uh, you failed to hack it, you would do that again with another name that you know it doesn't have in its cache, so you use a name that you know doesn't exist. Now, what does this attack look like? First, we need to take a look at a uh, UDP DNS packet. Now, there are some things in here that are interesting. There is the uh, uh, port that the query was sent from and that I need to reply to on the um, uh, to the host that is asking me a question. And there's something in there that's called a query ID, which is, ac is actually authenticating that this is the real answer to a question that um, the, the uh, resolver asked me. And there is some extra information in this packet. Uh, it actually, uh, DNS is very convenient. It helps you along. It helps the resolvers along to get extra information so that it uh, works efficiently. So there are some rec uh, extra records. If I get an answer, um, and this is an answer to a query, I asked uh, a, an authoritative server, what is the address for www.surfnet.nl? And it's sending me an answer, and it, along with um, the actual answer, which is the IP address is 194.171, et cetera, 
It also tells me that for the surfnet.nl zone, um, the authoritative servers are ns1, 2, and 3.surfnet.nl, which is really convenient. And to make my life even easier as a resolver, it sends along the IP addresses uh, of these three servers. So what happens now if uh, the resolver um, receives such a packet, it will not only cache the answer for www.surfnet.nl, but it will also cache the answers that are in the uh, additional section, which is the